It's great to be here with you gentlemen at TM Forum. Let's talk about AI, and I can't think of two better companies to discuss this with than NVIDIA and Dell Technologies. So to start with, before we get into the specifics of the telecom industry, let's just talk about data centers and the modernization that needs to happen to effectively do artificial intelligence. Maybe we can start with your perspective. Absolutely, it's a great question because as we shift into the new AI era, as we talk about the change that is necessary to adopt these AI technologies, we're seeing rack scale architectures come out. We can't do single lift and replace nodes anymore. So in partnership with Dell Technologies, we created what we call the AI factory, which is a scalable reference architecture that's certified, tested, and supported by Dell and NVIDIA. What this means is that companies of any size, from the smallest ones up there up to the biggest ones possible, can deploy AI at scale, but they can also start very simply with just a rack scale architecture. GPUs require different software. That software from NVIDIA, called NVIDIA AI Enterprise, powers this technology. It's built into the AI factories, which means as we pivot from GPUs being HPC centric, powering supercomputers predicting weather, we now have chatbots. We now have AI technologies that can be powered at scale, supported in the enterprise, that companies like telcos who have zero tolerance for downtime can be very comfortable in running. So what's the Dell perspective on that? I mean, obviously a, a long history uh, in the data center on-prem, but very much an inflection moment here with the interest in AI and the importance of it. So what are you, uh, what are you seeing, what are you doing? Well, it's, it's obviously an acceleration unlike anything we've ever seen in the industry. Um, it is changing the conversations on multiple fronts, starting to your point at the data center, uh, how to uh, take advantage of it. But one of our biggest points that we believe is it all starts with the data. The data is core and center and that's why the data center is important, making sure that you have access to the data, that you can get access to the data, it's changing the models, and we are front and center in, in driving this transformation with our customers. A lot of customers don't know where to start, and to Jared's point, that's why the AI factory is so important, to be able to identify the use cases, to be able to identify the TCO and the return on investment, to enables the uh, investment that is needed to go start to refactor <laughs> all the data centers that's needed to take advantage of the AI revolution that's happening. So where are operators today? I know within telecom system business, you're engaged globally with uh, leading carriers everywhere, but how do you think about the readiness today and then sort of the trajectory that they need to uh, be thinking about as they invest in AI? Yeah, it, it sort of depends which part of the operator you're talking about. Um, a lot of the telcos are starting to look at it in the traditional use cases of how are they using it in their customer support with like AI chat box, how are they advancing the services that they provide to end users. Um, and then it's relatively new in the new AI model framework of how do they then run it and operate their networks utilizing AI around AI ops. And that's the area that's truly uh, kind of emerging in, in the early development. Yeah, Jared, what's the NVIDIA perspective there? I mean, we've got a, a lot of potential use cases, but in terms of short-term value creation, where do you think operators should be focusing? Uh, it's a great question because we see the already advertised use cases. You know, we see a lot of chatbots and digital assist agents and everything like that. Those have been well-defined by ISVs and they're able to build them relatively simply right now. I think where we're going to see the customers start adopting it is when we see solutions from like Amdocs with their Amaze platform. We're seeing very major ISVs come out with Gen AI, LLM accelerated workloads. Those are going to be the ones where I'm going to start seeing the biggest change in impacts in the customer's business because that really affects those core telco OSS, BSS use cases. Either it's going to be revenue generation or it's going to be saving of money. And that saving of money is going to be huge as we talk about optimizing their workflows and making a better customer engagement out there. So to your point about chatbots, we are seeing a lot of uh, discussions here at the show around customer interactions, making for uh, account growth, more sticky relationships with your customers. How do you move from AI for customer facing processes to AI for network optimization? That's a great question. Um, going back to David's point of it being in the data center. It's called a data center. It's not a compute center. It's not a server room. Most people call it server rooms, but it's called a data center for <laughs> a reason. A it's been a while. Uh, machine rooms has also yeah. been used. Um, follow the data. 
where is the data in the customers? Where's the data that's going to make a difference for it? What we're seeing now at the very forefront of Gen AI is the use cases, again, the use cases that are well defined. What I'm excited about walking around here on the TM forum floor is seeing where customers are going, hey, I've got this data problem. This data problem hurts. How can I make this problem go away by leveraging my data? By putting a natural human interface into the problem to go troubleshoot a network where the Gen AI is building a code system in the background. Those are the sort of things that basically disaggregates the complexity of the network, disaggregates the complexity of doing the business functions in the background, and makes compute much more accessible to people. And that's where the NVIDIA technology comes into play is because we're democratizing compute. Compute is now available out to the masses in combinations with LLMs and other interfaces on the front end. People can now access that data and make better decisions going forward. So I'm really excited to see where customers are building those, building these smart knocks as we're starting to see, building AI on, with, and for the network, how it's going to power these operations going forward. It's a very exciting moment uh, in the technology world. Well, the, the, sorry, to, but the, the other thing that has to happen, you talked about modernization of the data center, is the modernization of the application. And as you mentioned with Amdocs and Nokia and Ericsson and others, as they're modernizing the application that can take advantage of the AI models, be able to really incorporate that into the functions that are it's driving within the network. That's how you're going to take it from the AI chat box uh, and apply it into the network because you know the applications will be modernized. And, and one of the, the coolest things I think about the Catalyst project that we're doing with SKT is it's being presented in an AI chat box, but one of the power that it's doing is the map platform, which is plugging in to the uh, legacy BSS system, because right now not everyone can afford to modernize their BSS system, so it's taking advantage of an older BSS system, but being able to take advantage of the AI models to then drive an AI chat box, but there could be other applications, whether you're doing AI ops or whatever, so you're starting to see things that connects kind of the legacy to the new, so you don't have to modernize everything at once, because the industry obviously can't afford to do that. And I love that because of the software. As we talk about the modernization of that software into familiar interfaces and familiar ways they know, yeah. IT departments and telcos have run these environments for decades. Yeah. That middle layer software to quickly deploy AI applications, that is key. Without the software, we're never going to get anywhere in the AI world. Sorry, we can run forever on this. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you raise an interesting point. We talk a lot at this show around, is your infrastructure AI ready? But I mean, is maybe a better question, is your data architecture ready for AI? And the application. You got to have all three, and then you got to have the people and the processes to, to do it all. So it's it's a major transformation, obviously. And that's why I love Michael Dell's story. Bring your compute to your data. Your data is disaggregated all over the network. With NVIDIA and Dell, we can put the compute as close to the data as possible, process it as quickly as possible, and empower it all with AI operations. So what is a realistic starting point for operators and what is a realistic expectation in terms of value creation, whether that's cost reduction or whether that's something that would generate new service revenues? What, what can we really do today? That's a great question because there's lots of different angles they can look at it and it's pretty complex when you look at customers of telcos that have been around for 40, 50, 100 years going back to telephone system lines. I would obviously suggest let's start with the solutions that are out there. See what customers have. ISVs, Amdocs for example, they're a great partner of Dell and NVIDIA's. They've got a great platform, you're already using them. There's your AI workload right there. They'll be glad to have a conversation about it. But I would also say, understand where your users are starting to use the data. There's the old joke that accounting was run, run under somebody's desk and, and the entire company's accounting business was run under somebody's desktop for years, right? The data's out there in your company. Your customers are using this data, right? Go build them in an AI factory and then start accelerating that data on-prem. It protects your data privacy, it protects your data sovereignty, and you're empowering your local users to make sure that they are comfortable with expanding their own knowledge base and increasing their productivity and reducing that revenue cost out there of coming up with these insights. It's not as difficult as people think. Yeah, I, I would just add, start somewhere. Prioritize and start somewhere. The telco industry is famous for studying and testing and testing and studying, you know. But there's plenty of use cases that you can start, you can learn, and you can prove out the TCO and the return on the investment, but start and start to move fast and then start to drive it more holistically through. And part of the AI factory is looking at what are those use cases, how do you prioritize? I know within Dell we had to go through the same exercise where we had a couple hundred 
projects underway and we had to prioritize that down, get really focused on where we could get business benefit and then really prove those out and then it grows from there, so start. One of the, the it's a great point there is like where to start, right? And we see a lot of, not just in telco, but broadly decision and decision. We don't know where to start. Well, I work with David's team and I work with the Dell services teams. We have POC services teams that'll come in and tell you, start here. This is where your data is. This is a problem that your company's having. We'll get you started there. And then we can figure it out where to go from there. So it's not even be afraid about being started. Just ask us, we'll help, we're here. Well, this concept of AI factory is very compelling and the partnership between Dell and NVIDIA, it's uh, really exciting. So I appreciate you taking the time to update our audience on how you're working together to really uh, embolden the operators to take advantage of uh, AI. Yeah, it's an exciting time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Glad to be here. Appreciate it.